everybody. My name is Mrs. Laura and this is my daughter, Alexis. Alexis, can you tell everybody how old you are? I am eight years old and I am in third grade. And this is Lily right here and she's 18 months old. <laughs> and we live in Michigan. So right now, actually it can be really cold in September, but actually right now we have a beautiful day outside. Nice and sunny and great for a walk. So we're gonna start an adventure, animals around the world. We're actually going to use my animal notebook as kind of a guidebook for doing our projects. My animal notebook actually divides things by mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and but we're gonna take it one step farther and we're going to go ahead and divide it by continents as well. So we're gonna visit each continent and go through all the mammals, then visit them again and go through the um, reptiles and go through all the different kinds of animals. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we decided to start today with Australia. But first we'd like to kind of know who is watching with us. If you could please just give us your name, your age and where you are from. And then Alexis, can you tell everybody again? Your name, age, and where you're from. My name is Alexis, and I'm eight years old. I'm in third grade, and I live in Michigan. And this is Lily. She is 18 months old, and she lives in Michigan, too. <laughs> so we like to have little extra learners when we're reading all sorts of things. So we love utilizing our local library to discover all sorts of new things. It's funny because the librarian always knows what we're studying in homeschool. It's not a secret that we homeschool here. So they always know what we're learning about when they see a giant stack of books about Australian animals. First, we want to kind of go over the world map here. I like to see we have some people. Let's see. Ella is nine years old and Matteo is eight years old. Let's see. Emily is eight from South Carolina. Fun. And I missed what the, I don't know how to go back and look. Oh, there we go. Oh, and they're from Michigan too. So Ella and Matteo are from Michigan as well. And we have Emily, who's eight from South Carolina. That's <laughs> fun. Yeah, Alexis has not quite been, well, actually you've been to just the edge of South Carolina. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> I'm allergic to the pollen. Oh, Ava is five and she's from North Carolina. Oh, it's so pretty down in the Carolinas. A lot warmer than it it stays in Michigan, that's for sure. Michigan gets a little bit chilly. So we wanna go over our map here. So Alexis, could you sing our continent song? And I'm gonna to point to the continents as she sings. Asia, Europe, Africa, then down to Antarctica, North and South America, last of all, Australia. Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic and Southern too. Oh, well, thank you, Alexis. And you all might recognize that song from the, if any of you do the Abeka Video School, you'll recognize that song. So today we're actually going to... Australia, the land down under. Now Australia is really cool because there are lots of animals that actually only live in Australia. So I'd like to hear from everyone, when you think of Australian mammals, what are some mammals that you would think of in Australia? Um, a Tasmanian devil. What do you think of the Tasmanian devil? I don't know if anyone else has some guesses on what they think of when they think of an Australian animal. What is the first thing that comes to mind? And while you're thinking, I just wanted to share with the different kind of zones or climates in Australia. So that's why there's so many different kinds of creatures. There's a lot of desert. There's also a decent amount of savanna or grasslands. And in fact, some maps will actually show it all around here, that the grasslands kind of loop all around here. So this one just has a smaller section. And then they also have the temperate forest, and again, actually up in this area too, there's actually some tropical rainforest too. So there's a lot of different um, climates in Australia that gives a wide variety of a lot of different animals. Oh, and Elena ran any Rodriguez, they say hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So I think one of the big ones that a lot of people think of is probably kangaroos. And kangaroos, in fact, they are only, I should say only wild, because you'll see them a lot of times, kangaroos are all over the world in zoos, but a kangaroo is only wild in Australia. 
Oh, and Boone is watching. He says a koala. Yes, koala is one too that they only live in Australia, except like I said, except for zoos. I'm just going to do like a summary of this book on kangaroos. This is actually a scholastic book about kangaroos by Lisa M. Harrington. The red kangaroo is actually the biggest kangaroo. It can be over six feet tall. That is huge. They are very large leapers. And in fact, they can jump, or they can actually jump 40 miles per hour. And they can also jump 25 to 30 feet in just one jump. So they're amazing jumpers. This one is, we thought this was such a cute picture. Look at that little mama. Oh yeah, that one. Isn't that cute and the little Joey? He doesn't look like he's gonna be in there too much longer. So this is the red kangaroo. It's the world's largest marsupial and also Australia's largest mammal. Look at these cute guys. They're just chilling on the beach. Oh yeah, that's a learner. <laughs> they cute? Enjoying the beach. So yeah, there are a lot of beautiful sandy beaches as well as there's a lot of the, the red rock and red dirt in Australia. So these are actually Eastern gray kangaroos. They're relaxing on a sandy beach in Australia. This is also nice to see a little diagram of the different parts of the kangaroo. So here are the tall ears. Those give the kangaroos great hearing. You can tell, look, because when, remember when you cup your ears, you can hear better. So try that cup around your ears and you can, you can hear better, can't you? because it opens them up. So that's how the kangaroo's ears work. Now it has very long hind legs and they're stretchy. They're perfect for speedy bouncing and high hopping. It has very short forelimbs. They act like little arms and have paws with five digits, just like we do for grasping things. Now this is one of the special things. It has a special pouch and it's used to carry and feed the babies, which are called doughies. Huge, large hind feet, and they have four toes on each, and they keep help the hang kangaroos spring through the air. Last but not least here, there's a very strong muscular tail. This provides balance for jumping and support for standing. So a lot of really cool facts about the kangaroo, and remember these, because we're gonna be writing them down a little bit later. Here's some kangaroos. They can hop more than 30 feet in one single hop. That's amazing. Now a group of kangaroos is called a mob. Isn't that kind of a funny hey, name? Hey mom, I'm gonna go see the mob. <laughs> the mob of kangaroos. So they are not solitary animals. They like being in a group called a mob. And in fact, the, the males will kind of fight and box each other to see who's gonna be in charge of the group. And here's a pack of dingoes. They will hunt kangaroos. And so dingoes are also an animal that's only in Australia. And then here they are. They can spend seven to 14 hours a day eating. And because they're herbivores, as you know, vegetables and plants will have less calories. So they actually do need to eat a lot more to sustain their weight and their energy. And they also have the stomachs like the cows do. So they actually regurgitate their food and they go back down and they process the food more and more. This was kind of cute too, that this reminds me of how the doggies in the summertime will dig a little hole in the dirt oh, yeah. and then they stay cool. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And they also, the kangaroos actually like to sleep on their sides. I know we like the babies. So here's the little newborn babies. So the newborn joeys, they're only the size of a little jelly bean. They're so little when they're born. So that's the one thing with marsupials is they're not fully developed when they're born. So they're born not fully developed and then they live in the mama's pouch. Here's this cute little Roo Rider. Isn't he cute? It's nuzzling up with his mama. That's a Western gray kangaroo, nine to 12 months old that's when the joey will leave its pouch and look at how this mama she's giving her baby a little nudge saying come on come on go out into the world oh let's see mackenzie is eight from brunswick ohio oh and elena says aw to the babies i know babies are so sweet we find it doesn't really matter what the creature is babies are just sweet i thought this was kind of fun in australia they have kangaroo road crossing signs. I know in Michigan we have a lot of deer road crossing signs and I'm wondering where everyone else lives. Do you have any special animals that you see a lot of signs for warning you that they might cross the road? We have turtle crossing too. That's true. We have had turtle crossing ones too, but I thought that was kind of cute to see. A, 
I think if I ever went to Australia, I'd have to get a picture of the kangaroo crossing signs. We thought this was sweet too. So these are the little rescue rooms. Like orphan joeys. Mm -hmm. They're little orphan joeys. And so they're trying to mimic the mama's pouch like that. And we have Luke here who's eight and he's from Missouri. I've been to Missouri, but it was a long time ago. I went to actually a Bible camp down in Missouri and it was during the summer and I remember it was so hot. I was sweating the whole time. Oh, and deer crossing. So Abby, they have deer crossing where they are. Here's some more relatives of the kangaroo. We have a tree kangaroo. He has curved claws and as you can see, he lives up in the trees. This is a rock wallaby. They have special soles on their feet so they don't slip, but they look very much like a kangaroo, the wallabies do, but they're smaller. Feet are a little bit smaller and they have something a special sole because they tend to be in the rock. So they're gonna be in a different habitat than the typical kangaroos. These are super cute. We're gonna read about these a little later too, the quokka. I'd never heard of a quokka before, but they are also only they're in adorable. Australia. They're they are, adorable. they are adorable and they're a marsupial. And they often look, it seems like all the pictures, they look like they're actually smiling for the picture. So cute. Here's a musky rat kangaroo. He's actually a very distant relative of the kangaroo, but they can actually fit right inside your hand. So let's see, it looks like the Neal family sees lots of armadillos in Alabama. Yes, and I, I have a friend who lives um, down near that way. Yeah, and they see armadillos all the time. She loves armadillos. Oh yeah, those are adorable. Aren't those cute? Yep, they're pretty cute too. So talking about mammals, if you all have your animal notebook, you can go ahead and get it out. We're gonna actually learn a little bit about what is a mammal. And if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear what you think about when you think of a mammal. Elena's dog had seven puppies a while ago. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. And puppies are mammals. Mm. Oh, and they sold them all. I know that would be the tough thing. If we had puppies, I don't know if we'd be able to sell all of them. Right? I think we'd end up with at least three puppies. <laughs> right? So if you get into your animal notebook on, let's see, it's going to be back towards the back on page 99. You're going to see some little um, cards here that you can cut those out if you want to, to use them like flashcards, but we're going to keep them in our books just because we're going to keep going back to reference them. So if you look way up here in the corner, it says mammal characteristics. How about if Alexis, could you read for us the mammal characteristics? They milk for their babies and take good care of their young. No mammal has more than four limbs. They have at least some hair or fur. All mammals have lungs and breathe air. All mammals are warm blooded. So mammals, the big thing I always think of is the fur. Most furry animals are going to be mammals. I'm an amphibian. And actually humans are mammals too. We are mammals because I mean, we, yeah. yep, we have fur just it's not, doesn't show quite as much as the other animals do. Mackenzie says in Indiana where grandma lives, there's cow crossing. Oh, wow. I'm surprised we wouldn't have cow. Maybe we have cow, cow crossing too. We have a lot of farms around here, I know. That's fun, cow crossing signs. So main things about mammals, they make milk for their young. They have no more than four limbs. So any creature with more than four, you know, is not a mammal. They have at least some hair or fur, just like us humans. We um, we only have a little bit of fur. Oh, we do have, have some. We or do it's not fur, I'm sorry, we have hair. <laughs> we don't have fur. We we do have snake. I think we have like snakes. You, oh no, we actually don't live in Orlando, but we visit Florida because um, my grandma, her super granny, and I have an aunt and uncle in Florida. So that's why she talked about um, in Florida. We're actually in Michigan. So we're pretty far from Florida. But it's worth it. Yep, yeah, we like driving down to Florida. And then if you see on the back of this page here, you're gonna flip it over. And the back, it tells you some mammal facts. So the largest mammal is the blue whale. There are actually over 4,000 types of mammals all around the world. They can live on land or in water. They can live in warm or cold environments. Bats are the only mammals that fly. And in fact, the smallest mammal we learned is something called a bumblebee bat and it's so cute they showed a picture it sits right on your thumb it's only like two grams i think it's super super tiny yes and whales are mammals yes they are they are the blue whale is actually the largest mammal and then they have the little bee um the bumblebee bat is the um world's smallest mammal cheetahs are the fastest mammals and they can run up to 70 miles per hour 
koalas will sleep most of all the mammals up to 22 hours a day. And I know sloths are right there too. I think sloths are not. Um, no, fish are not mammals. So fish actually are going to be just a, a, fish. Really? Nope, the fish actually are going to have their own little category too. So the fish have gills, they have fins, and they're cold-blooded. So they're quite opposite of mammals. But there are mammals that live in the water, but they're going to breathe um, with their lungs. Like a whale does not have gills. The whale will come up to the water, open up its spout, breathe the air, and then come down and hold it. They, I don't know how long they can hold their breath, but they hold it for a long time. But yeah, we will get, I think fish is actually after mammals, after we, we're, we're going through the whole world. So we're gonna have seven weeks of mammals here, and then we'll move on to fish. So there's some fun um, mammal characteristics to get you going on that. And Australia actually has almost 400 mammals. 140 of those are marsupials. And I'm wondering if anybody knows, no, don't tell anybody yet. So if anybody knows what is a marsupial like how do you know how do you distinguish how would you define an uh, and marsupial uh, because there are 140 marsupials in Australia now they're not actually the only place Australia is not the only place with marsupials North America actually has the opossum which is a marsupial and South America has a few varieties of marsupials but all the other ones live in Australia and while everyone's thinking about those marsupials and answering that question, I'm going to tell you about a new group of animals that I just learned about today while I was studying for this. And the group is called monotremes. Can you say monotremes? Monotremes. So monotremes actually is a mammal that lays eggs. And can you tell us a special monotreme that we learned about today that you even wrote down in your writing book today that starts with a P? While she's thinking, someone was telling us about a turtle I saw. Turtles can hold their breath for nine hours, but only the sea turtles can. That's a great fact. Yes, a kangaroo is a marsupial, you're, and koalas are marsupials, so you're getting close. They are. Both kangaroos and koalas are marsupials. Oh, from the Abeka book, yeah. I know that the the Abeka curriculum has some wonderful information. And in fact, I was just telling Alexis, I said, I really like... Um, homeschooling her because not only does she learn things, but I learn all sorts of new things too. And that's so fun. I love learning things. So a marsupial, you kind of got it on the right track. Koala, kangaroos. And can you tell us what is a marsupial? Um, something that has fur. Well, that's the mammal. The mammal has fur. But remember, the marsupial has a, I'll give you a hint. A pal. There you go. So a marsupial is actually a mammal that will have a baby that's not fully developed. Like you saw that little kangaroo that's the size of a jelly bean. So the baby is born just like it's not developed and then it stays in its mommy's pouch to develop. And then a lot of times they will actually um, be there a long time um, still developing. Even after they develop, they stay in the mama's pouch. I think as long as they can until like that, like you saw that kangaroo that kicked its mama out. <laughs> <laughs> it had enough, hadn't it? So yeah, marsupials will have are the mammals that have a pouch, and there's lots of different kinds in Australia. But the monotremes, the mammals that lay eggs, there's actually just two different kinds. One is a platypus, and one is this other adorable little creature here. I have to show you called the echidna. Let's see if I can show you a little bit. Look how cute he is. And there's only actually two kinds of this echidna, there's a one that's called the short beaked and one that's called the long beaked. Now, the long beaked does actually have three different um, varieties, um, but the short beaked, there's only one, and there's they're only living in Australia. Oh, Abby says she likes your baby doll. Can you tell her thank you? Thank you. Yeah, she likes it because it's a, it looks like a new baby doll. So yeah, these sweet little echidnas, and guess what they're called when they're babies? They're called puggles. Isn't that the cutest name? I just, I was really impressed with the echidnas. I thought they were adorable. Now on to our other monotreme is the platypus. And this, these are actually great books. This series, they're called Abdo Kids. And the photographs are just beautiful and they're super simple to read. 
um, and they go through the different ones. Like this one actually has a whole series on Australian animals. I know they also have African animals and Asian animals that we've read already. They have some about animals that go through metamorphosis. And the pictures are just beautiful. And in fact, this, the group of Australian animal books, they were just published in 2020. So this year. So these are brand new books. So the author and illustrator is Grace Hansen. And as you can see, her illustrations are not drawings. She's actually a wonderful um, nature photographer. So here's the platypus here. He lives in Eastern Australia. They also live on the nearby island of Tasmania. You can see him in the water there. Oh, and it looks like Elena loves platypus. I know they are fun creatures. Whoops. Owen oh, Mackenzie said that she liked the baby doll too. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I know platypus are super cute. So the platypus can be found near or in fresh water, like lakes, streams, and rivers. Many live in the Murray or Darling Rivers, which are actually the largest rivers in Australia. Look at that. You can really see their, the beak and the texture of their beak here. The platypus is a very unique mammal. It has a flat head and a duck-like bill. The bill is covered in leathery skin. And look, you can really see in this picture the leathery skin. And look how well his fur will repel the water. They're really amazing creatures. Its body will grow up to 22 inches long. That's almost two feet. And then it ends with a really short, wide tail. And in fact, when Alexis and I first saw this picture, we almost thought that was the head up there. <laughs> but it was actually the tail. <laughs> So the platypus's back is covered in brown fur, and then lighter fur is covering the belly. Why do you think darker fur would be on top and lighter fur is on the bottom? Let's see, Mackenzie has my iPad, so all of these comments are from her. All right, so if, so if it says Abby, that's Mackenzie. Can you help me remember that? <laughs> Oh, and Melissa loves the koalas. I know my aunt, actually, that was her favorite. Koalas are such sweet. Oh, really, all these animals are really just sweet creatures. I noticed a lot of the Australian animals, you know, there's not too many that are, like, dangerous and scary. I mean, they do have some um, dangerous creatures. Um, but as far as the mammals go in Australia, they tend to be pretty gentle creatures. Especially the koalas. Yep. So, Alexis, do you think, can you figure out why the platypus its back is dark, but its belly is light? Because darker is warmer. Well, I mean that is like that's a good guess because actually the darker would absorb the sun's heat, but it's also for camouflage. So like if you look down at the water, it's darker. Whereas if they look up at the water, they're kind of looking up at the sun. So the platypus, that's God's way of protecting that platypus. Let's see, Elena's favorite Australian animal is the koala. Oh, good. Well, it's a good thing we have a book about koalas we're going to read. And here's the webbed feet. That helps the platypus swim. And he has long claws to help dig burrows. Food and hunting. At night, the platypuses come out to hunt and eat. They like to eat insects, snails, worms, and more. So you can hear that um, they are... Um, they are omnivores because they'll eat the animals and they eat plants. Oh, and there's a the little baby platypuses. See, they look very much, are very much like the, um, the creamy eyed. Yep, like the little, even though these are not marsupials, these are monotremes, but they both are, have the very, they both have kind of unborn babies. Uh, because they hatch out of the eggs. <clears throat> Unlike many mammals, platypuses actually lay eggs. The females will lay one to three eggs at a time. Babies stay in the burrow until they're around four months old. They are really sweet, aren't they? Little sweet baby platypus. So here's a few fun platypus facts. I'll let you look at this picture while I'm reading them. The male platypuses actually have a spur on their back ankles. And the spurs contain venom that's strong enough to kill small animals. So that's a protection they have. Let's see. Yeah, or is Abby? That's right. This is Mackenzie. Mackenzie. Yeah, Mackenzie used to think that platypuses were made up creatures because she used to read Pete and the Cat and there was a platypus. I know. And you know what? Looking at them, they do look like a made up creature because it doesn't make sense that a mammal would lay eggs and have a beak and have webbed feet. So, yeah, they do seem like they're. But I think God 
he just he has a sense of humor you know we are made in his image and we all need laughter and and humor and i think god he just, I think he was feeling giddy. I think he just was feeling a little silly and he made the platypus and then he was happy and he said, it was good. He liked that platypus. Well, we heard about the platypus, the males, how they have the venom. Well, platypus venom will not likely kill humans, but it can cause intense pain that can last for weeks. So even if it looks like a sweet little creature, the animals that are wild, they can hurt you. So you, de you definitely stay away from wild animals. So platypuses will actually store the food they catch underwater in their cheeks. And then when they get up to the surface, they'll eat their food. And there we have our sweet little platypus. All right, let's go on to the koalas. I hear a lot of people talking about koalas. Koala. Yeah, so here we have, and this is actually our same um, group, the Abdo Kids book. Abdo. And look at that sweet little koala. Look at that face. And this one's also by Grace Hansen. Great. So she wrote the words and she also took these beautiful photographs. So I wonder how long, it'd be interesting to know how long she spent in Australia taking these pictures. This is kind of a cute stance because you always see koalas in the eucalyptus trees. And look how, look how cute that stance is. It kind of reminds me of a little gorilla kind of out in the jungle. So koalas may look like little bears, but they actually belong to the marsupial family. You should watch Izzy Koala's World on Netflix. There's koalas and she teaches about it. Oh, that would be a good one to watch. Izzy Koala's. We'll have to learn. Actually, we use YouTube a lot. We haven't used Netflix much for learning, but we use YouTube a lot. There's a lot of good little clips on creatures and stuff. And on Amazon Prime, there's a show called Wild Crafts that has actually a show about kangaroo and animals in Australia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Alexis really likes the, the wild crats too. So as we learned about the marsupials, koalas are marsupials. They have that pouch and their babies are born just a little bitty bitty. Kangaroos are marsupials too. And there are 140 marsupials there in Australia. Koalas live in eastern and southeastern Australia, which is kind of where that temperate um, jungle zone was. They make their homes in the eucalyptus trees. How many of you have smelled eucalyptus before? Have you smelled that? We actually use eucalyptus in our diffuser. And oh, looks like there's other people that watch um, Izzy Koala World too. Fun, that's a lot of fun. Oh, and Lily's watching now too. Hi Lily, good to see you. We're learning about koalas here. So here we have the eucalyptus and has anybody smelled eucalyptus? It has such a strong smell, but we like to diffuse it and it really kind of helps um, clear your sinuses. It helps kind of clear your head a little bit too. And I just, it has such a fresh smell to it. Well, that's really all the koala eats is eucalyptus leaves. Eucalyptic is what you mean. Oh, actually, yeah, Alexis, I forgot she has a joke. Can you say hi? Oh, Lily's saying hi. Can you say hi to Lily? Hi. And then um, Mackenzie says, me with mint in it, oh, in the diffuser, so yes. And sometimes I'll put the yeah, eucalyptus and spearmint, eucalyptus peppermint, sometimes I'll put eucalyptus and lemon too. And that does, it's really nice in the diffuser. Oh, see, we have a lot of people using a eucalyptus essential oil. That's a good one, isn't it? But actually, Alexis- Speaking of eucalyptus- She's got a good joke. So share your joke with everybody. Let's see, what, hold on. Um, what is it? I think it was, um, or I mean, I'll ask you, what do, um, oh, what do koalas, do you want to just do it later? Or do you remember it? Because now I can't remember how it starts either. Oh yeah, koalas must have really nice breath. That's a good point. <laughs> I bet they do have a really nice, probably smells very fresh. So actually living up in the, the eucalyptus trees are actually really, really tall. And so living up there actually keeps them safe from predators. And we actually learned that koalas often get hit by cars in Australia. So I forget how many it was, but there was a large amount, I thought it was 90 a week or some large number of koalas that get hit by cars and end up in these um, animal sanctuaries and um, uh, places to help them heal. Look how you can see how thick its fur is. A koala is covered in thick, coarse hair. So they're not soft, even though they look like they might be soft, they're not. A koala will use its claws to clean itself. And actually, I think the next picture shows, oh, not, not and one in this book will show the, how big their claws are. It was surprising. So koalas will have a curved spine. 
and they're shaped just right so they can fit in the nooks of the trees. See how perfect that is? See, God really knew what he was doing when he created all these creatures. Oh, here's the picture of the claws. This was what we were, so we were surprised to see how sharp their claws were, even though we knew they had to, um, that we had to, um, that they had to climb trees, but it still was a little surprising that you think of koalas being such sweet little things. Let's see. My birthday party is this Saturday and my real one is next week. Oh, so Elena's got a birthday coming up. Well, happy early birthday, Elena. Oh, and Ab, or it looks like Mackenzie has a joke. What do koalas wear on their lips on date night? Oh, that was your, yep. It was a little bit different than that, but that was hard is how it started. You want to you answer that? What do the koalas wear on their lips? Eucalyptic. Eucalyptic. <laughs> yep, that's cute. Yep, see, that was, the, that was the joke we were trying to think of. Thank you, Mackenzie, for your help. <laughs> so their hands, these claws here will help them hang tight onto tree branches, and the pads on their hands and feet are really rough. So, it's a, so that way it gives them extra grip because being up so high, if they were to fall out of the, those eucalyptus trees, it would definitely hurt them very much, if not kill them. So a koala's arms and shoulders have to be very, very strong. The koala is very good at climbing trees. And he spends all day up there. So koalas only eat the eucalyptus leaves. And then they sleep 18 to 22 hours each day. And they digest their food while they sleep. So they're only awake for a few hours and they eat. And then they digest their food. Much, very much like a sloth. So here is the little koala joey. Look how sweet. The female koala usually has just one joey at a time. Same with kangaroos. The joey is very small at birth. It's the size of a jelly bean, just like those kangaroos, just the size of a jelly bean. But think about it. The kangaroo grows a lot bigger, whereas the koala doesn't grow quite as big. So the joey stays in its mama's pouch and drinks milk. After six months, it rides on its mother's back. And then after one year, it's ready to live on its own. So it stays with mama for a whole year. And here's some fun koala facts. So koalas use trees for more than just a safe place to live and sleep. They also keep them cool in the Australian heat. And actually, if you were to take a koala's fingerprints, they look a lot like human fingerprints. Pretty cool. So there we have a fun little book about koalas. Now this, there's a couple animals I just wanted to show you that are from Australia. These are more creatures that are actually only in Australia. We have the sugar glider. Aren't they cute? Right? So they have a very thin skin that connects its legs and that allows the sugar glider to travel from tree to tree. And this was a really cool fact. They can actually fly 148 feet. Can you imagine that from tree top to tree? That's huge. They have also a very useful tail. Their tail helps the sugar glider balance when flying and climb. It can hold branches and carry material for nests. And he has really sharp little teeth so he can dig holes in the trees to reach the sugary sap. And it uses his tongue to take nectar from blossoms. So they're really cute. So they, again, they live in Australia. There are some up in Indonesia as well. But those are ones you can't find anywhere else in the world. And then here we've got the gray kangaroo. And then now we just have one more. And this was another new one that I'd never heard of. I'm wondering, has anybody heard of a quokka? Let's see. Oh, look, it looks like um, Miss Cayenne is at work and she just wanted to see us. Lily and her will watch the replay later. Oh, well, good. It was nice to see you. <laughs> and you can learn all about our Australian animals. <laughs> so here we have our quokka. This is our last book before we start drawing some fun pictures here. So the quokka was the one that we learned about a little earlier that always had that cute little, uh, looks like he always has a smile on his face. So again, this one is by Same Lady. Grace Hansen. So, yep, so she um, wrote the words and she drew, or not drew, I'm sorry, she took these beautiful photographs. But no. look at this little face. Doesn't he look like he's smiling? Oh, so cute. Can you see it, Lou? So, the quokkas are native to the little tip of southwest Australia. They also live on the Rotnest Island. It's pronounced quokka. 
This little marsupial is as unique as his name. Its tail is short compared to the other marsupials. It can grow between like nine and 12 inches. The quokka, you can see, look at that round body. The quokka has a small rounded body and its ears are also small and round. And its snout ends with the little black nose. They kind of remind me a little bit of um, the muskrats we have here in Michigan. We see a lot of cute muskrats. Let's see, Elena asks, did you know there are green ants that are harmless for koalas and they cannot see because they go on their faces and, oops, looks like, won't let me, oh, and infect them. Oh no, I'd never heard of the green ants. Oh no, that's a good, that's a good thing to learn about. And it's amazing how there are a lot of creatures that help each other. God made it so that um, the world all works together. Like there's not just one separate unity. Like we all work together um, for the greater purpose. And that's how God created us to be the arms and the feet and the head and the same thing with the creatures. Quokkas do not look very fast, but their short legs and large feet allow them to move quickly with ease. And look, look at him jumping up there. He looks like he's pretty fast when you see him here. Oh, and Melissa, she loves the baby koalas. I know they were sweet, weren't they? Especially when they're hugging on their mama's back. So cute. Look at this little face here. Isn't that the sweetest little thing? <laughs> the quokka's fur is coarse to the touch. So again, they are not soft. Just like the koalas have that coarse fur, they are not soft. It's often brown or gray in color. But oh, so cute. That little face. Isn't that cute? Don't you just want to squeeze those little cheeks? So the quokkas have sharp claws and they use their claws to protect themselves. Because think about it, this creature does not have size, it doesn't have strength, it's not overly fast. It doesn't have a lot of ways to protect itself. Food. Quokkas sleep during the day and at night they look for food. And what does that mean when a creature looks for food at night? It's nocturnal. That's right, nocturnal. And we know that quite a few of these marsupials are nocturnal. They'll often eat grass, leaves, fruits, and berries. There he's eating an interesting looking little berry there. It, remind, oh, it reminds Mackenzie of a hedgehog or a hamster. Yes, it does. It definitely does. And it's funny because it's not necessarily in the, um, the rodent family. So that's why it's interesting because it's a marsupial. It's a whole, it's interesting how marsupials kind of, they, they take a little bit from the rodent family as well, it seems like. Quite a few of them do. Here's a little quokka baby. The quokkas live in small family groups. The females have one joey at a time, and the joey is very small at birth. So if you notice something with the marsupials, they only have one baby. Because think about it, they just have the one pouch to have one baby. It keeps it nice and warm and cozy. Well, the joey, and again, the babies are called joeys, they climb into its mother's pouch and stays there until it's about six months old. Then it's big and strong enough to come out into the world. Look how sweet. So here's a few facts with the quokkas. They look adorable with their large eyes and smiles, but they're still wild animals. Getting too close to one could leave you with a bite or a scratch. Quokkas do not need to drink much water because they get most of the water they need from the plants they eat. The early Dutch traveler first thought the quokka was a large rat, and that's why the island they're found on is named Rotnest. The word is Dutch for rat's nest. So actually, there are about 8,000 little islands all around Australia. Not all of them are inhabited, but um, some are. So Sarah's asking, is it almost over? It's, well, it is and it isn't. We're done reading. So if, you're, if anybody needs to leave, that's definitely quite all right if you need to come back. Um, but now we're going to look in our books to draw some of these different animals that we saw. So yes, if, if anyone needs to leave, that's quite all right because we're going to actually post these videos on um we're going to post them on the facebook page so you can watch them later um but yes we are done reading now now we're going to get our animal notebook and you're going to turn to so i'll show you so the first page looks like this where it has a little um note to the parents and a note to the students and then you're going to see it has the table of contents and then it has the My Animal Notebook. So this is a place here where you can actually put your picture. And then you can also um, write your name and the date and the teacher there if you'd like to. We're actually going to do our front page, um, I think, towards the end. Because I think we want to get a picture with an animal. So this is the these are the pages we're going to do today. So here we have, or it just says mammals. It's a blank page. 
and then you have a white page over here. So if you notice, we have, um, there's green pages on one side and there's white pages on the other. The green will be for our writing and the white will be for drawing. So I'm actually gonna flip the screen over so we, so you can see Australia. what we're Australia. Mammals of Australia. So it's depending on um, what you're using, if you're using a blank piece of paper or if you're using your animal notebook. Um, and you need definitely need a pencil. That's our preferred way of, of writing utensil. And on the one side, we're just gonna write a list and just one fact about each one, which I'll probably let you do your facts later. And then on the other side, let me open it up. On the other side, you're actually going to do, um, we're gonna do drawings. Yes, and we will spell Australia for you. I'm actually going to show you. I'll spell it. And then on one of these, I had it. Or well, I was going to show it to you, too, on the screen. So let me. Oh, here we go. I'll put it on there, but then I'll also spell it out loud. So Australia is spelled A-U-S-T-R-A-L. I A Australia. So we have our mammals of Australia. We're going to write the name of them and then we're going to, I'm just going to go, we're not going to do all of the animals that we talked about today, but we are going to go over some of them and we're going to draw them on this side and we're just going to write a fact about them on this side and the facts I'll let you write later. We'll just write their name for right now. So the fun thing um, about drawing creatures that makes it a little bit easier is looking for the shapes and the outline. Let me make sure that it's not, that it doesn't have a glare on it. There we go. So if you look for shapes and you look for an outline, instead of trying to go draw all the little details of the animals, it's easier if you just go through the shapes and the outline. So we're going to start with our koala. And I, there was one page in particular in here that I really liked that I'm actually going to use because I really liked how the koala was looking right at the page. Let's see if I can find where it was. I think it was the one. Oh, here we go. This is the one I liked here. So I'm going to use this as my guide on how to draw a sweet little koala. So we're going to put, we're just going to put them up in the corner here. So as you can see, like, again, you're looking for shapes. So we have a circle head. So I'm going to make my koala up in my upper left-hand corner. And then, you're, Alexis, you're going to be on this side for the drawing. So right up here in this corner. So as you can see, I'll show you on your notebook page, too, so everyone can see. So you've got your mammals of Australia. We'll write their name over here. Oh, looks like Mackenzie's a really good artist, so she's going to go complicated with it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, and Elena is too. Oh, yeah, you can go as complicated as you want. I'm going to show a, a simplistic drawing, and you all can definitely make it more complicated. So on this side, the mammals of Australia side, I like to do bullet points. So I'm a big bullet point fan. So I'm going to show you about bullet points. If you don't want to make bullet points, you can just make a list. So what you'll do is you'll just draw a little dot. That's your bullet for your bullet point. And then we're going to write the word koala. So I'm going to spell that for you. That's K-O-A-L-A. -A. Now, we're going to write in printing, but if anybody wants to write in cursive, they're welcome to as well. I don't even know how to write cursive. That's okay. I know, yes, you were still learning how to do cursive. So that is totally up to your teachers at home. Your teachers at home always have veto power over what I say. So whatever I say, if they want it done a little differently, then that is um, how you'll do it. So then you'll just make a little bullet point right there and you'll have the word koala. And then later, after we're done, you're gonna go back and make a sentence about like the koala and a fact about the koala. But we're not gonna take time to do that um, during our lesson video because we just, otherwise we'd be here for three hours, I think. Oh, it looks like Elena writes cursive. Good. And that's okay if you don't write, no, remember printing, that's okay. You can do printing or cursive, whatever is easier. So we have our koala. So then on this, the left page, which is white, we're going to start just up in the little corner here and we're going to draw our koala. So the koala, as you see, has um, a circle, a little bit of more of an oval shaped head. So we're going to draw his little head here. How about a red panda? 
Well, they're actually in Africa. Mm. Yeah, they're not in. Oh, and Boone. Nice to meet you, Boone. I hope you like koalas too. So we can see we've got like kind of a, a circle, slight oval head. And the big distinguishing factor is look at that long oval shaped nose. So we're going to give him a long oval shaped nose with the two little nostrils at the bottom and just a little happy mouth. And then the sweet little eyes. I noticed this little guy, look at how he's got like cute little teardrop shaped eyes. So I'm gonna do cute little teardrop shaped eyes for my little koala. There we go, little koala bear, sweet thing. Now the ears are also very distinctive. So you see the little fur on the ears? So we're just gonna slightly trace the two ears, but then we wanna put a lot of fur on the ears. So you're just gonna take your pencil and draw the fur all around. There. And you can give them like a little bit of inner fur too. It looks like Mackenzie's still gonna do the drawings, but she just wants to do shading and stuff. Okay, yes. So please go slow. Yes, I will try to go slow. So there we have our little fur. And you could, you know what you could also do, Mackenzie? You could also kind of just do the quick drawings with us, and then you can go back and do the shading too. And that way you can spend a little more time. Because so I think even what we'll do here is we're gonna kind of do the draw, go through the drawings, and then we're gonna go back and probably fill them in a little better. So like if you wanna fill it in with some fur, you just draw a bunch of lines. It's the same way you can make grass too. You just kind of fill in lines and stuff with your sweet little koala baby. So there's his little koala's head. And then I'm gonna draw, remember how he has that curved back for sitting in the tree? So I'm gonna draw his little curved back with his little koala foot here. Almost like a little teddy bear, doesn't he? And I'm gonna draw his little koala arm and paw. And then I'm gonna draw his little claws so he can hang on to that eucalyptus tree. I'm gonna give him his sweet little koala belly. And then I'm gonna actually draw him on a tree. So I'm gonna draw the little tree branch up here. And kind of draw him hanging out on the tree there. Look at our sweet little koala. And again, you can go back through and just give your koala all sorts of little fur all around. Give him his little claws on his feet too so he can stay up in the tree. So he can enjoy his eucalyptus all day long. So what is a fact that someone remembers about our koala bear? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Anybody have any ideas? What do you think? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, yes, that's okay. Yep. And if you if you need more time, that's okay. She draws yeah. fast. Yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a little bit on the faster side, so that way we're not here for too long, because otherwise we might be here for a long time. But yeah, you can definitely... Just do a quick little sketch, and then after you um, finish the sketch, you can go back. Like, I will probably still go back and give the koala a little bit more fur. And you could even color them, too, if you wanted to go back and use colored pencils or crayons. So now, while you all are still kind of drawing, oh, Elena knows a fact. What's a fact that you remember about koalas? That's what you're going to do on this side, is you're going to write your koala fact. So, Alexis, what's the first thing that pops in your mind when you think of the koalas? What do you remember? They're a mammal. They are a mammal. That's definitely a huge fact because we're learning about the mammals of Australia. One thing that I think about is that they are a marsupial or that they eat eucalyptus. And they, yep, they have the pouch like the kangaroo. And all of those creatures with pouches are called marsupials. So if you want to know how to spell marsupial, so I'm going to write this here so that you can, if anybody wants to write that fact that they're marsupials, I'll, you'll have the spelling for that. So we're going to write koalas are, and then marsupials is M-A-R-S-U-P-I-A-L-S. Koalas are marsupials. So we won't go through all the facts today. But I just wanted to show you kind of what you're going to be doing um, with this side. We'll just be writing the names right now. Yes, and here is our sweet... Oh, yes, and they are cute. And in fact, that definitely is a fact. I don't think anybody would argue that a koala is not cute. 
So here's our sweet little koala. And again, you're gonna label this side as well. We're gonna label that this is a koala. So if you wanna label on the top, you can. You can label on the bottom. I'm gonna probably label on the top here. So I'm gonna label my koala K-O-A-L-A, -A, koala. So there it is, and it's okay. If you are not done, you can definitely, because I know Alexis, she's actually drawing the mama and the baby. Look how sweet. Oh, very sweet. Why do they have so long legs? Oh, I think they're cute. They do, look at, if you look in here on the book, their, le their arms and legs are not short. They do look a little bit long for their body. <laughs> See? I know, look at that sweet little koala face. So there we have our little koala. And actually our quokka here, look at that. I think that's a good picture right there of the little quokka. But one thing they had mentioned with the quokka too is that they're round bodies. So I want to go back to the picture here that actually showed. Oh, look at that one. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. These little quokkas. So look at that lone, that one with the round body. Yes, yeah, she did. She had a little baby that was tucked right there, right in the belly there. There, good job, Mackenzie. She's got her koala. So now we're going to go on to our little quokka and we're going to draw our quokka. This one I actually kind of want to draw to the side here because I like to show how round their body is because that's a very distinguishing factor of our quokka. So quokkas are spelled a little different, aren't they? So then here, our next bullet point, bullet point in the quokka is Q-U-O. K, K, A, quokka. So that, I'm going to leave that, and then you're going to go back and do it. Um, you're going to go back and actually uh, write your fact later. But yeah, they're, very, they're such cute little creatures. So here we have our little quokka, and um, we're going to draw him over here. So I'm going to draw him kind of like how he is here. So you can see their big, round body. So we're going to start with that big round body so there's his big round body there and then his head's a little bit smaller isn't it so and he's got a little bit of a pointy um, snout so we're going to kind of give him a little bit of a point there his ears are on the smaller side he reminds me of a little bit of a muskrat oh that's okay yep you got it right now. It's Q-U-O-K-K-A. It's an interesting spelling. And remember how they had that little black nose. So we're going to make that distinguishing factor of that little black nose there. They've got two sweet little black eyes. And then they have two little smaller um, kind of claws, paws and claws up there. And again, they kind of have like the rodent-like back legs, like you would see. Oops, maybe a little skinnier. There, I'm going to make mine a little skinnier. That was a little bit too wide, I think. And then they have a long tail. And the tail is very, um, very rodent-like. So here is our sweet little quokka. So we're going to label our quokka. And who can tell me who is it? What is a fact somebody remembers about our quokka? Do you remember, Alexis? So here we go. Q-U-O-K-K-A. There's our sweet little quokka. So who, do you remember any facts about our quokka? Well, let's see, let's look back and let's remember a few little things. So the quokkas are um, a, a marsupial, just like the koalas are. Um, it has a very round body. That's another one, another fun fact. They have very coarse fur. So maybe we could put that. A quokka's fur is coarse to the touch and it's often brown in color. They have sharp claws. Maybe we can do that. Should we put they have sharp claws? And you all can put any, any fact that you want to. So we'll put quokkas have sharp claws. It looks like Mackenzie's looks like a raven with a rodent body. <laughs> That's okay. My quokka isn't quite exactly like a quokka. The real quokkas are definitely much cuter, but that's our that'll be our interpretation of it, of the shape. <laughs> All right, we're just going to do two more. 
we're going to, does anybody have a um, preference on what, um, maybe we should do the platypus, right? Unless someone has another preference of a, of a creature they like. So platypus, we're going to write that now on here, Alexis, the next dot. So our next bullet point, and we're going to write platypus, which is P-L-A-T-Y-P-U-S. And if we remember, the platypus is a special kind of mammal called a monotreme. That's a tricky word, isn't it? So let's see our platypus. Let's see which one would be a good um, copy for our drawing. Because the best, like that's actually a pretty good one that shows the shape a little bit. Or we could actually mimic how a lot of times it shows it coming out of the water. Maybe we'll put our little platypus just kind of coming out of the corner here. Should we do that, Alexis? Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to put our platypus kind of coming out of the bottom left corner. I think that would be a good spot for it. So we're going to copy this shape here. So you can kind of see it's almost just like a cone shape, isn't it? If you look at it like that, except for its bill. So I'm actually going to kind of draw just the top part here, kind of going down a little bit. And then its bill, that's kind of the trickier part here. So we're going to do it kind of like this. And there's his like lower beak. And it kind of has like some raised edges on his little bill. There we go. And then there. And look, you can see here how he has um, the white underbelly and the dark fur up above. Oh, Elaine is asking, does Alexis go to the Abeka? Because she does. Well, we don't go to the Abeka school, um, but we do the video school. At, we do some of the video school, and then I teach her some of the Abeka. So we kind of do a little bit of both. But she does do it Abeka. And in fact, I did Abeka from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So I did a Becca school when I was younger too. Oh, and Elena too, yes. I know, I, 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 that's why I really like the Abeka curriculum. So if we can see here, the platypus just has a little tiny eye, doesn't it? So we're gonna give our platypus just a little tiny eye here. There he goes. And then I'm gonna label him platypus. So platypus is P L A T. Y P U S. Oh yeah, and Elena does the homeschool Becca too in third grade. Yes, that's the same. Now Elena, do you do the video school? Oh, and Mackenzie loves the video. She does the video school. Elena, do you do the video school too for third grade? So here's our platypus, and then we're gonna actually do our kangaroo here. I feel like to me, I feel like the kangaroo is probably the hardest of all of the animals to draw. Oh, yes, Elena does the videos, too. Well, good. Now, what lesson is everybody on in third grade in the videos? We actually, we kind of, we go during the summer, but we do it really laid back in the summer. So we don't do it every day. So we're actually on lesson 32. But it's because we started at the end of June. Oh, Elena's on 28, so you're not too far behind us. Oh, and Abby, or Mackenzie's on 21. Yeah, so you girls are actually pretty close to where we are. We're, we did 32. I'm trying to think of which, you know what, I think, I'm trying to find that one um, kangaroo that had a good, they showed the diagram, they showed the different things. I felt like that had a good shape to it. Where did it go? I thought it was farther in the book, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, here he is. This is what I was trying to find. So now we're going to make our very last creature we're going to do is a kangaroo because I wanted to actually be done in one hour and it's already 302. So we're going to try to hurry up on our last one here. So I'm going to leave it. Oh, and there um, Boone's at the parent led lesson 38. So they're ahead of us, but not too far. Everyone, we're all about the same, um, the same part. So that's good. So I'm leaving the platypus blank so you can fill in your um, fact for that. And then, then the last one we're going to do is the kangaroo. which is K-A-N-G-A-R-O-O, -O, kangaroo. So again, those are marsupials. So look, three of the four creatures we have are marsupials. 
And then the platypus there is our monotreme. And I think later we're going to go back and do the, um, the echidna too, which is the other monotreme. So we're going to just fit one more um, creature here. We're going to try to fit and we're going to try to kind of squeeze in our little kangaroo over here. Yes, Alexis is in third grade. Yes, she is at lesson 32. So here we go with our kangaroo. So the kangaroo is a little trickier. As you can see, all these other creatures had pretty round shapes all around. Whereas the kangaroo, it's got some different shapes. The head's a little bit different shaped. It has the long neck that kind of slopes back than the tail. So the kangaroo is a little trickier. So let's see how we can do our sweet little kangaroo. We're going to start with the kangaroo head. I'll back it up so you can kind of see where on my page where I'm right here. So let's do our kangaroo head. It's a little bit like a horse head, isn't it? So here's our kangaroo head. It has those long, tall ears. Now that kind of reminds me of a, of a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Mackenzie has a good fact that a platypus has flippers to help them swim. That's a very good fact. So you can write that down on this side, that a platypus has flippers to help them swim. When Elena doesn't even live in the U.S., she was born there, but she's moving, and then she's going to move back in November 6th. So where do you live now, Elena? And then here we'll have its neck kind of goes down a little bit, and then the Back kind of comes down. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna run out of room here for the poor little kangaroo's tail. And then the up here is kind of an interesting shape too. It kind of starts up here, kind of goes under there, and then I'm gonna put the pouch here because I feel like you definitely need to. I didn't draw any other babies yet. Then the legs. That's another distinguishing feature. Oh, she's in Honduras. It stays warm there all the time, doesn't it? That's one thing. We 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 have a drastic change of seasons in Michigan here. So the leg has a large thigh here and then a very long foot to kind of help stabilize as it jumps. And then the tail, I'm going to have to put my tail actually on this page because look, my tail is going to get caught off here. So the tail, we're going to move our tail over here because you can't forget that long, strong tail. That's a huge part of the kangaroo and how it functions. Now the kangaroo also needs some little arms, doesn't he? Remember he has the shorter arms and he does have claws as well. So we're gonna have two shorter arms and some claws. And then now we're gonna draw a little sweet baby Joey. Oh, and Elena can speak a little French and Spanish. Wow, very good. I only know poquito espanol, <laughs> not much. Oh, her first language is Spanish and she loves English too, good. So here we have our little Joey here. Again, a little bit kind of like the little horse head. And the Joeys also have those large ears. So they can't tell their mommies that, oh, mom, I didn't hear you. Because we know those kangaroo Joeys have good hearing too. Give them a sweet little eyes, the little nose and the mouth. Same thing with our mama kangaroo. Give her some sweet little eyes and like more of a, almost like a cow nose. And it's a little mouth. There, and there we have our little kangaroo. So we're going to label her as well. And let's see, we're going to label her K-A-N-G-A-R-O-O. -O. Kangaroo. So there we have just four of those fun creatures we learned. And you're welcome. If you want to write more facts on some different ones, that's quite as well, too. But we, I was trying to keep us at one hour, and we're six minutes over. So <laughs> we'll go ahead and put our, our papers. We're going to post ours. And then we'd love to see yours in the comments, too, to see how um, your creatures turned out. So take your time. You don't have to post them right away because we're, we're going to spend a little bit more time on ours. And we'd love to see yours, too. Okay, so we actually live in Michigan. Yep, so it gets pretty cold. But actually, it's really nice out today. It's not cold here in Michigan right now. But thank you so much for everybody joining us today. We had a lot of fun. And we'll continue next week with another continent. It's going to be a surprise. I'm not going to tell you what continent we're going to go to next week. But we'll look forward to seeing you. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching.